Hello everyone, my name is Clay. Welcome to Kellum Enterprise Training. Today we're going to cover the first part of the maintenance functions. Maintenance functions is the second part of the Kellum Enterprise Training. Training can be instructor-led or self-guided. And we're going to focus on the maintenance functions today. There are hands-on lab in the training. Uh, when the training is done as an instructor-led session, uh, your service or your data will be used so you can work with your own data. For self-guided training, you can either use uh, your own service or you can use Calum demo site and to do the hands-on lab. The maintenance functions include asset and locations, preventive maintenance schedules and failures, uh, work order service request and change management, scheduling and the dashboard. And we're going to focus on the asset and locations today. Uh, we have uh, visited uh, the overview, so we're going to skip this slide. Uh, we have also talked about the architecture and we're going to skip this slide as well. And uh, maintenance functions here are shown inside the green box. And uh, the other functions will be covered in other sessions. Let's start with uh, user interface. Uh, in Calum, the user interface typically starts with a list screen or a list uh, or a dashboard an item. So from the list form, you can create an item, you can view the item, or uh, the list form may uh, open to a mass detail meta tab form. You can also search uh, the list view. From mass detail, you can access the read form or the detail lists, which is also a list form. And when you're creating data or edit the data, you could use lookup form or auto completion. So let's look at more uh, details. Uh, here's the list view at the top. Here is the free search box. So it's a free text search. And uh, uh, there's also this uh, search menu. They are advanced to search, so you can search specific columns. And you can also save search so uh, for shared use later. And you can see that uh, there's menu bar here. There's some menus that are shown um, in the menu bar. And there's also more menus may show in the more drop down menu. You could select more than one item to apply the menu if a batch menu is available. There are also menu items that doesn't require you to pick a row to activate. For the editing screen, there's uh, this breadcrumb trail here, so you can see where you're coming from. And uh, the menu bar, the save button would be enabled if the data is valid and ready to be saved. There's uh, this uh, validation indicator is showing you if the current data is valid on the form. Here's the auto completion that you can type and the column would look up, uh, match the list and uh, find the uh, matches for you. You can also use look up a button to bring up uh, the list form to pick uh, an item for the drop down. Here's the uh, Mata tab form. The main tab essentially shows you the menus and the data views. And on the top are the tabs that you can click to switch to other tabs. Now here's one detail tab, for instance. The top portion is the main data row. And the uh, you have two list views here. You could have more list views listed down below. And when you click on the search button, you can use save the search or edit an existing search. Or you can directly use the plus sign here to create a new search. 
when you set up a user, you can define the uh, the search permission. Uh, one could be a group admin to create a search for use by the group, or to be a system admin, the search can be shared uh, by everyone. And now let's do the hands-on lab. So in this hands-on lab, you're going to create a service request, use a lookup uh, form to pick up an asset, search uh, service request list in free text search and also in the search form. Then you can launch open work orders, open service request forms, and uh, open a data inside work order or open service request, then switch between the two tabs. Uh, next, uh, we want you to pin open work order list so it won't be auto-closed. Finally, you can try to close all tabs by the right mouse click on the form tab. Let's just take a quick look at the form tabs here. So you can switch between different tabs, uh, pin a tab, or you can right click to close all. Uh, our next module is the asset module. So essentially it's the asset and the location. So let's start with the asset. Uh, one, before you define asset, typically you should define the category, subcategory, and asset group and uh, to classify your asset. The asset category is the, the highest level of classification. For instance, you could have uh, vehicles, buildings to manage, and a vehicle could be the asset category. And the subcategory are a little detail for assets that share the same attributes. For instance, you can have a, a sedan and a truck as your subcategory. Finally, the asset group are for the assets having the same menus and the spare parts. Typically, it's from the same manufacturer of the same model. For instance, uh, for trucks, you, you can could have asset groups of uh, Ford F-150, the truck. So they share the same docks, drawings, and parts. And also, you could have GM Silverado as uh, another asset group. So once the asset group and subcategory is defined, you may go ahead and create an asset. You can leave the asset number blank for the system to auto-generate one for you or you can just uh, uh, enter the asset numbering mechanism uh, that of your own uh, choosing. So you can enter location, asset group and uh, some warranty information you can then save it. So by doing this you then create an asset uh, in your system. For To create a lot of assets uh, it's better to prepare asset list in Excel templates uh, like here and then you try to upload the Excel file to Calum using the integration module there's that upload screen you just pick the asset file and upload it to your system let's look at the asset screens the details data that asset might have asset part tab shows the spares the spares are organized by asset group. So if you go to any asset and add an item here to the asset tab, it is made available to all the assets in the same asset group. So there's no need to go to every asset to modify its spare part. You just need to edit it from any asset. It's done at the asset group. You can also view assets from the asset part list report in the asset module. And assets can also have contract and if you're not using straight line uh, depreciation you can define your custom uh, depreci depreciation worksheet here. You can add uh, meters to your asset. You can also define triggers for the meters so that whenever asset reading is uh, uh, causing a trigger to fire, you can have a workout created for you. 
uh, you can attach documents to an asset. This is managed at the asset group level. So if you add a document to any uh, asset form here, it's added to all assets of the same group. Attachment are specific to the asset. For instance, a specific damage report may have a photo you could uh, just uh, attach as uh, the assets uh, uh, from the attachment list here. You can also look at the history of downtime, especially employment downtime, and notes added to the asset. Uh, you can also view the PMs, the scheduled tasks you've defined for the asset. And uh, you can also view the child assets for, for this asset. And finally, you can define asset relationships. This helps you analyze asset dependencies. And essentially, to define relationship, you start with a category, subcategory level relationship. Then you go to asset to, to define the relationship between assets. And also, there's a transaction tab. You can see asset movement. For instance, if it's sent for outside repair and when it's received. Asset activity log essentially shows you all the work orders performed on the asset. And there are typical, a few buttons help you kind of filter in the reports. You can uh, just see this asset, not the child assets. And you can also say, I only want to view open work orders, not closed. And asset status log showing the status changes and asset movement. There's also uh, the other SS status report, which shows uh, the, uh, you give a time period, and you also decide if you want to include child assets. And the system would generate an Excel file showing all the meters and readings, all the PM schedules, all the work orders, all the parts issued to the asset, all the service requests for the asset, and so it's it's a whole summary of the information about the asset uh, with the period of time that you selected. Asset structure is a way for you to manage uh, some uh, complex asset with a hierarchy of child assets and meters. For instance, you might have a ship each ship with three engines, three gearboxes, and there are meters associated with engines, gears, and their child assets. Let's say we have a total of 30 meters. So instead of uh, creating one asset, creating three engines, three gearboxes, 30 meters for each ship, you could define an asset structure. And then when you create an asset for this asset structure, all the hierarchy of assets and the meters would be created for you automatically. So it's a very useful tool if you need to manage complex assets. Next, let's look at the location. Uh, location group is just a way for us to uh, put shared information together, like preventive maintenance schedules, uh, spare parts so you can define asset group location group then you can define location so you have to enter a location name uh, pick a site you can then pick the location group you define some warranty information then you can save the location also if you have uh, many locations uh, you may want to just uh, upload them using excel file so would be similar like an asset. In the location form, you can see that a location has uh, similar information as for an asset. In a location, you can find assets uh, installed at the location. You can have a document and attachment, uh, contracts, PMs defined for the asset for the location, and also meters and triggers for the for the location. So in other words, we do support meters for our location and as well as for an asset. 
Location tree is a very useful screen to view your site location uh, and asset as a hierarchy. And a location can have uh, child locations, and assets can have child assets. So it's a very good form for you to uh, view your asset location structure. Uh, location also have history logs, uh, like activity log, status log, and a status report. So this is similar to asset. And then next, let's look at meter groups. A meter group is for assets with the same reading type, same validation, and same triggers. And we support four types of uh, meters. One is uh, we call usage a meter. For instance, you have a trip meter to record miles traveled. And you can use uh, a usage meter to drive maintenance schedules. You also have, uh, uh, we also have this absolute reading meter, like odometer. Uh, for instance, at 7,000 7, miles and at 10,000 miles, you want to schedule some maintenance. We also have a gauge, which are essentially fluctuation readings, like uh, temperature. And you can define triggers for gauges. We also have leveled meters. It's like oil level. You can use leveled meter to generate usage meter readings, which can then be used to drive uh, maintenance schedules. Uh, once uh, you define the meter group, you can then define triggers for a group. To define a trigger group, you specify the trigger name and specify the reading range. And there's ways for you to say if it's less than certain range, greater than certain reading, or within a range to define a meter trigger. You can enter meter readings manually, and you can also upload uh, meter readings, have a scheduled upload as well. You can read this blog for more information. You can also uh, review meter readings by uh, the meter reading report. You enter that range and to kind of uh, show all the readings taken for that range, you can then export uh, the meter readings to an Excel and do some analysis from there. So here is the hands-on lab for the asset module. In this hands-on lab, you're going to create an asset group, create a category, create a subcategory, then you create an asset, create a location group, a location, a meter group, and create a meter for an asset and location, add meter readings, and uh, perform asset status report, location status report, and also uh, you may prepare uh, some locations and assets in Excel sheet and upload it to the system. Uh, next module, we're going to cover the maintenance schedules. Hopefully, through this training, uh, you can start uh, populating, your, populating your system with assets and locations. If there are any questions, contact us at Calum EAM. Thank you.